Hey, this is Dan Palanchar, Senior Solutions Architect with School of Sheet Solutions Consulting. We make custom smart sheet solutions, and today I'm going to answer a question from the smart sheet community. So we have a user here, Tabitha, who's trying to make a formula, a count if with is date and is blank situation. She has a sheet where she would like to count the rows where there is a date selected in a date field, but no region selected. She tried this formula here and it is not working. And um, just by looking at it, I can tell why it's not working. Um, basically, the arguments are not going to be evaluating the data in a way that makes sense to the formula. So let's take a look at this sheet and make the formula work. So the uh, columns in question that we're going to be really evaluating are the date and the region. This is a date field and region is a drop down select. It would work actually with any other column type just fine, but this is the most, I guess, logical example. So I'm going to build the formula on a row level first, then in a sheet summary, and then in a kind of summary field within the sheet itself, just to show you how it works in multiple ways. So let's build this formula. Again, we want to count any row where a date does exist, but the region does not exist. So we're going to use a count ifs. We're going to look at the date. We want to use is date. And we're going to use um, at cell. The at cell is telling the formula to look at the cell in question based on the range that I specified. So look at the cell at the date field, within the date field. We're going to do the same thing, but for region, region at row. And at row is telling the formula to look at the same row in this line. And we're going to use is blank. Enter that, and we're now counting the first one. If we convert this to a column formula, we are going to see some of these are being counted. So let's add a little conditional formatting to quickly see them. All right, here's all of our applicable rows, and you can see in every instance, the date field is populated, the region field is not populated. That's exactly how we want it to work. The advantage of using is date in our formula, one of the advantages is that if you input texts, it's not going to count it unless you actually convert it into a date. So there are certain ways that you can get text to convert to dates here, but if you put in some just kind of nonsense or you make a, you know, some type of error with your formatting, it's not going to count that. But again, this formula, count ifs, date at row, is date at cell, region at row, is blank at cell. That works on the row level, it's all well and good, but we want to get it for the entire sheet. So the sheet summary is uh, pretty useful actually because it allows you to have a basically a separate location out of the actual grid of the sheet to get some data and you can make some nice reports here that if you have you know it's pretty common that you might have the same project tracking sheet for all 10 20 hundred thousand of your projects you can make a sheet summary field that's going to report out the kpis of that project very easily so if you had many versions of this sheet and you wanted to see across your different sheets how many uh, data points match your criteria you're evaluating. Sheet summary report would be a great way to do that. So let's build this formula on the sheet level. It's gonna uh, be structured very similarly. The exception is we now need to evaluate the entire column as opposed to simply the row in question. So for our range, you can evaluate an entire column by using the name of that column, a colon, the name of it again. And you can see here, the entire thing is being selected in blue to uh, can perpetuity. So as you add new rows, it will continue to evaluate the data. <clears throat> Criteria is the same, is data itself. We repeat the same process for the uh, region. We want is blank at cell, and it's not parsable because my parentheses is in the wrong spot. All right, now it's parsable. So again, very similar to the row level, just converting the um, row level ranges to entire columns. 
that we are showing 144 instances where there is a date, but there is no region. If I delete this region here, we'll expect the count to go up by one. Yep, it's going up as we delete these. And a kind of a good check would be to delete everything. And now these first few rows up here aren't showing. Let's just delete them for a second so we can show that the data is accurate easily. So 432 instances, and we have exactly 432 rows. The data is exactly the same as it's copy and pasted. So it's working perfectly. Let's get our summary info back. The summary info is not being counted because it doesn't match the criteria as well. Okay, so sometimes people prefer a view such as this, where you have at the very top of your page some summary metrics. Um, you might have information about personnel assigned. You might have other important pieces of data that are based on the entire sheet here. So if we want to get our count here, what we really need to do is paste the formula and it will work in the same way. Of course, as we add data here, the number's going to change. Um, a little trick, if you want to add a like a label onto this, within the formula, you can add te uh, a string or text, you know, string is a technical term. By typing it within the quotation marks, add a plus sign, and now it says count, and as you add this stuff, it will continue to update. The uh, last way I'm gonna show you is how to do this with a cross sheet reference. All right, so I've opened up another sheet here, and what we're gonna do is get this data onto a, another sheet, which is actually pretty common. Sometimes people wanna have an entirely separate sheet because they have a ton of metrics. It can give you some more flexibility with the layout you use for reporting, and sometimes it's useful if you're creating charts on a dashboard, things like that. So we are gonna basically make the same formula, but we need to reference an external sheet. Let's make this text slightly larger so we can see. All right. So first, let's use a text column, not a number, a date column. Count ifs, range, reference a, another sheet. Count if with is the blank. So here we go. We are going to evaluate the date column. So when you're making a cross sheet reference, let's make this a little bigger. You're going to just, if you click the column header, you will get that whole column and so here we go. We select this. I'm going to just write, I'm going to change the sheet reference name. Insert the reference criteria is dates at cell. We repeat this for the region. Change the reference name for organizational purposes. Is blank at cell. And we get 100 and 72, the formatting can change. Okay, 172, and that's the number that we have here as well. We're getting a notice this sheet's been updated with changes. The change being that you're gonna see some dots appear in these two columns because now there is a cell reference that's been added. So if we start deleting some stuff, we're up at 175. This updates in real time because it's linked to the live sheet data. This will update, but this hasn't been saved yet. So technically that data is not actually in existence. So now that we've saved it, it is going to reflect over here, as you can see. And again, we also have our sheet summary version. So that there you go, that's three ways, uh, technically four ways actually to build this formula. We have the row level, we have the sheet summary, we have the basically sheet summary within the sheet itself, and we have the cross sheet formula. So I uh, hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. It will really help us out a lot. And if you are interested in getting some help with Smartsheet, there's some links in the description box to learn more about us and the tech work that we do. So thanks very much and have a great day.